mission is this. Two H-19s under the supervision of Captain Kelly had been assigned to support a party of surveyors in the mountains. Their objective? To select several sites for radar installations. These mountains could be the Andes, the Himalayas, the Rockies, or any range in the world. For helicopter pilots, the problems and techniques of mountain flying are the same everywhere. Captain Kelly will first fly in the advanced party to establish a base camp. He has nearly a thousand hours of mountain flying in helicopters. The second helicopter will follow later with a sling load of lumber for use at the base camp. Right now, Captain Kelly is giving his crew chief the exact cargo weight he wants aboard. Let's see how he arrived at this figure. Like most experienced helicopter pilots, he understands the importance of a thorough weather briefing, and he takes careful pains with every aspect of his preparation and planning, his weight and balance, his clearance form, and detailed cockpit notes. His main concern are conditions at the base camp site he had selected the previous day from the air. From base operations, he got the distance to destination of 54 miles, close enough to reduce his fuel load. The elevation of the base camp is 5,000 feet. Weather furnished a variety of useful information. Right now, he's interested in the effect of temperature on the elevation. He gets this from the density altitude chart. 18 degrees at 5,000 feet gives a density altitude of 6,500 feet. He knows this will cut down on his allowable gross weight of 7,900 pounds. The question is, how much? This will be the first landing in a new area. Better allow plenty of safety margin. Let's try a landing weight of 7,600 and check it with a flight handbook. with a gross weight of 7,600, wind of 10 knots, dew point of zero degrees centigrade, altitude of 5,000, and temperature of 18 degrees, an estimated 34.75 of manifold pressure is required to hover the aircraft. Next, does this power setting exceed limitations? According to the chart, 34.75 does not exceed the maximum allowable manifold pressure. So our estimated landing weight of 7,600 pounds allows a satisfactory safety margin. Previously, the estimated expendable fuel was 40 gallons, or 240 pounds. So the takeoff weight can be 7840. The total aircraft weight, including the reduced fuel, is 6680. Subtracted from takeoff weight, we get 1160. Less passenger weight. gives a cargo weight of 785 pounds. But since this is the first trip, we reduce the actual cargo weight 300 pounds. In other words, by selecting a cargo weight that will fit all known landing conditions at destination, he and his crew chief can organize the mission with confidence. And most important, the landing weight has a built-in safety margin of several hundred pounds. he hovers to check power and load stability. There's plenty of power reserve. The aircraft feels right. And 
Safety is on the way. As he climbs, he doesn't have to guess at his safe operating limits. Because prior to flight, he consulted another useful table in the flight handbook. These settings were okay to start with, but to minimize altitude vibration and the possibility of stalls, he periodically increases RPM and reduces airspeed. He also plans ahead to take advantage of terrain and wind. His drift tells him the present wind is from the right. Since wind usually follows ground contours, he can expect a slight updraft on the windward or left side of the canyon. Whenever possible, he alters course to fly in updrafts. This helps conserve power. He also plans ahead to avoid turbulence and vertical downdrafts. Here, less than a mile away, he ran into a wind change of nearly 180 degrees. He must study the ever-changing winds like a hawk, searching out clues which tell him if wind direction or velocity has changed. Here's the base camp site coming up. He selected it the previous day because of the variety of available approaches. On his first low pass, he has difficulty picking up wind signs for either direction or velocity. This is one way to get an estimate. Virtually no wind. But it's no joke to lose that predicted 10 knot wind. If he had not allowed a wide safety margin in loading, he could be in trouble on the landing. This time, he's slowing down to recheck the best approach into the wind. He's also getting the feel of the aircraft and checking his power reserve. Looks okay. Now he's ready to set up a safe, high-altitude approach. He started 2,000 feet back and 500 feet above the landing area so that the rate of descent can be kept at a minimum. All mountain approaches are planned so that the landing area remains visible at all times. He reaches zero airspeed and one foot above the ground simultaneously. The low hover altitude helps conserve power. In order to allow room for the second helicopter, which is to follow, Kelly moves his chopper to the side. After checking the ground for landing hazards, he touches down with a minimum hover. Notice he elected to let the passengers hand carry the cargo rather than land, merely for convenience, in a second best area. While they're setting up camp, let's see how Lieutenant Ellis is doing with his sling work. He's ready now to test his exterior load for balance and stability. The sling load has been weighed, securely bound, and the hookup made ready. Determining the center of balance and the positioning of the hookup attachment is strictly a matter of trial and error. Let's see how the load rides. For best stability, it should be balanced or slightly nose heavy. Nope, better try again. It's essential that the sling load be properly balanced to avoid shifting or oscillating in flank. Now the cable has been readjusted.
This time, the load is slightly nose-heavy. That's good. Notice how the snub rope and the rope between the front wheels help secure the load and prevent oscillation. In an emergency, the snub rope can be instantly released. The ground crew is satisfied, but it is the pilot who must be absolutely sure. That's why he makes a careful test hover before proceeding. The maximum allowable weight of sling load is 2,000 pounds, providing it never exceeds the maximum aircraft gross of 7,900 pounds. Lieutenant Ellis arrived at a sling weight of 630 pounds in much the same way Captain Kelly arrived at his cargo weight, and he allowed a safety margin of over 500 pounds. Notice his airspeed. 60 knots is the recommended maximum for sling work. With a sling, it's even more important to plan ahead for favorable wind conditions, especially to avoid turbulence. If turbulence is encountered, reduce air speed and pitch, and increase rotor RPM immediately. In emergencies, the sling load can be jettisoned in flight by the pilot pressing his release button, or by a crew member in the cabin actuating the cargo release lever beneath the cargo floor. At the base camp, they've had time to prepare the landing site. As soon as the copter with its sling load is sighted, a smoke bomb is set off, and each man takes his position. The smoke will help Lieutenant Ellis judge the wind close to the ground. He plans to clear all obstructions by an extra wide margin because of the sling load. Like Captain Kelly, he makes several test approaches into the wind. Then he makes the same type approach, allowing for a higher hover just before touchdown. Since Lieutenant Ellis has his hands full at the moment, he elects to have the airman in the cabin release the sling load. And he's on his way back for more supplies. By late afternoon, all personnel have been ferried in, and the base camp is organized for the next day's operations. The crew chief knows his field refueling precautions. The chamois is essential to avoid water or rust particles. The success of any mountain operation depends on how effectively every man does his job. The following morning, a fresh breeze is blowing. After breakfast, the crew starts preparations for today's flights. Captain Kelly is computing the landing conditions at each of the scheduled sites. The free air temperature is supplied by the instrument in the aircraft. In computing, he uses one of the handiest tools in mountain operation, a personal density altitude chart. The first objective leads through a broad canyon. Captain Kelly can't reach the base for a new altimeter setting, so he wisely leaves the last known setting on the altimeter. The increased vibration is normal at high altitudes. It may be partially eliminated by decreasing airspeed and increasing RPM. He searches for wind signs on every tree, bush, or lake. A helicopter pilot, like a bird, must use the capricious canyon winds to every advantage. As he turns into a narrow canyon, he flies on the updraft side, in this case, the right side. Flying below the crest is not dangerous on the updraft side in winds below 25 knots. If winds are strong, never fly below the crests under any circumstances. Here's a puzzler. Kelly estimates the wind here is flowing from two directions. It's certain to be turbulent. Abrupt terrain changes always mean wind trouble. Better to avoid the area.
Here's the first observation site. This rocky scrub-covered pinnacle calls for hoist work. There is usually no set wind pattern around pinnacles. On his trial approach into the wind, he feels out air currents and selects the point of hoist letdown. Notice he starts his final approach almost level with a pinnacle and comes in flat. To conserve power, he moves forward into the updraft and selects a final hover position and altitude that will give him a safe departure route in case of RPM drop. With a man on the hoist, the pilot must hold an especially stable hover since over-controlling here can cause dangerous swinging. The pilot is ready for the sudden load shift as the man touches ground and avoids dragging him. The surveying equipment is lowered next. Then the second surveyor descends. The men will be left here for several hours. Had it been necessary to land, they would clear out some of the obstructions and construct a level landing area. Before departing, the pilot runs up the hoist sling to avoid fouling during the takeoff run. Notice the takeoff over lower terrain and into the wind. The remainder of the party will conduct line-of-sight surveys from a nearby ridge. The pilot can still count on some help from the wind. Remember, for every 10 knots of wind up to a 25-knot wind, you can safely add approximately 1,000 feet to operating altitude. Because of turbulence, this advantage is usually lost in winds above 25 knots. Captain Kelly always makes at least two trial runs to observe the wind, to make a power check, and to determine whether or not he can safely take off. Now he's ready for the final approach. The steeper the windward slope and the stronger the wind, the closer he'd have to fly to the windward edge to avoid turbulence and downdrafts. The final turn is to the right to utilize torque, thus conserving power. He carefully checks his landing area and eases her down. The surveyor is operated for three hours on this site. During that time, the centigrade temperature increased four degrees. So Captain Kelly refigures his present density altitude. The temperature change adds, in effect, nearly 500 feet of altitude. This makes the takeoff more critical. And there's not much wind to help, light and variable. He has three choices. He can cut down the trees for a straight upwind takeoff, he can reduce weight, or he can take off over lower terrain. The basic problem is to plan a safe takeoff requiring the minimum amount of power. First, he makes a power check from a hover. Ideally, a high altitude takeoff should be into the wind and over lower terrain. Here he plans a safe compromise, since the lower terrain is to his right. He's waiting for a wind gust. This looks like what he wants. He adds pitch and throttle smoothly, since rapid application could cause a loss of rotor RPM and lift. And over she goes. Now to pick up the two men let out earlier. They had walked to this confined area. Looks a little tight. In order to guide the pilot, they have decided to set off a smoke bomb. Wind direction, velocity, height of obstacles, density altitude, aircraft weight, amount of slope. These are the critical factors on any mountain landing or takeoff. The pilot must carefully consider each factor. His decision here is based entirely on whether he can safely take off. Fortunately, the wind direction will allow a takeoff and a gap between the trees. By now, the smoke has dissipated. 
but he can tell that the wind is remaining constant. He decides he can make it safely, providing the slope is not excessive. Notice his minimum rate of descent. The rate will increase as the wind drops off below the treetops. So he anticipates this decrease in wind by adding power. This way he can maintain his rate of descent and touchdown with a minimum hover. Here on a slope, he must take two additional precautions. First, he must be sure that the tail rotor is not landed uphill. And second, he must be sure that the angle of the slope will support the aircraft without tipping. As a rule of thumb, if his airborne wheel is not more than one foot above the ground, he knows the aircraft can safely land. This looks okay. But even so, he makes doubly sure he maintains 2,400 RPM in case an instant takeoff is necessary to prevent tipping. He keeps the aircraft under his complete control until it is on the ground. Once safely down, he locks brakes immediately. And the wheels are chopped. To take off from a confined area, he first backs downwind for a maximum ground run. He then uses just enough takeoff power to safely clear obstructions. He wants some power in reserve. And they're on the way to a hot meal back at the base camp. Let's see what made it a safe and successful mountain operation. Complete preparation, utilizing every known fact about the destination. A predetermined aircraft gross weight, which allows a wide safety margin. Knowledge of wind conditions at all times, especially to utilize updrafts and avoid downdrafts and turbulence. Safe power settings as altitude increases, both to avoid blade stalls and excessive vibration selection of convenient and adequate landing areas. Let the passengers walk if necessary. Shallow minimum descent approaches to landings. Minimum hover to conserve power. Smooth application of takeoff power to avoid RPM drop. And careful attention to wind, terrain, and obstacles in all approaches and takeoffs. Add these basic common sense principles to helicopter experience and you can safely handle any mountain operation.